They're finally asleep. Grendel, the half-orc caretaker, sighed softly as they picked themselves up off the rubber playmat in the nap room of the tarnished Tots daycare facility. Grendel quickly and quietly walks over to the main door of the nap room, picking up wooden blocks as they go. I need a drink. Excuse me. Of coffee. Ah, Jesus Christ, Melandra. And Grendel shuts the door behind them, with the room still, and the five tots in their cribs. All is at peace. You're right. Well, yeah. Time to, time to start a new day. Whew. Well, it's been a rough one. Uh, but you know, Tim, it's been a good, it's been a good day. I think, I think we've accomplished a lot. And I think I'm ready, ready to hit the old sack. Ah, sorry, Alan! <sighs> Alan, shut up! If you keep talking so loud, then Grendel and Melinda are gonna come back inside and we're gonna get in trouble. Don't make me go over there and kick your ass. Hey, what's your language? Hey, oh, what's your language? Shut up, Alan. Where's Artie? Psst. <clears throat> Artie. What, what now? <laughs> uh, Artie. What is it, baby? It's time to go. Oh, 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 the plan. Of course, yes. Gather around, boys and girls. Gather around. It's time to strike while the iron is hot, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to get to the ground of play. Miss Grendel's gone. All we have to worry about is Melandre at the front desk. But first things first, we gotta get out of these here cribs. God, are we all in our own separate crib right now? You are each in your own crib. So, what you see inside the nap room of the Tarnished Tots daycare facility are six different cribs laid out. Inside one of them is Arthur Alexander, the boss baby, I assume dressed up in some sort of nice, uh, almost suit-like attire. Next, we have Allison Alexander, the dragonborn. Uh, this is Artie's half-sister, who's dressed in a traditional almost fighter-esque attire, but very babetized. It's very soft material. She's wearing a diaper as well. Also a diaper, very important. Uh, and all the way on uh, on the other side is our good friend, Alan. I He is not related, but one of their close friends. Uh, Alan, do you want to give us a quick uh, physical description? Yeah, so uh, Alan, he has a white polo shirt tucked into blue jean shorts with a tightened black belt and a little fanny pack secured at the hip. He has a fresh pair of New Balance sneakers with tube socks pulled as high as they can go. With thick rim square glasses, and he is wearing what I can only describe as like a child's harness that, you know, parents wear to hold a baby in the front. It's a child size that, and it has a stuffed frog strapped inside of it named Timifer. He's a dad baby. So, all three of you are in different cribs. Within the other three cribs, uh, in two of them, you see two of the kind of infants that are being cared for here. Uh, but the three of you are kind of some of the more competent babies in the facility. So, who is up first? We need a way to sec- securely and safely escape our cribs here. I'm thinking we tie our bed sheets and pillow sheets together and repel. Go in, a wall, you know, drop in, drop out. But don't become a dropout, you know. Save for that Gerber Life college plan. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. I could just jump over it, though. But you're gonna hurt yourself, sis. No, I'm not. I'm a dragon bored baby. I'm not human like you, big brother. Sorry. Does she have wings? No. Damn it. <laughs> that would be really cool. I guess I won't jump, because if not, Artie's gonna get all upset at me if I get hurt. So fine. Well, maybe if you threw a pillow down first to cushion the fall. I'll I'll throw you a pillow. And she Don't worry. If pillow. something happens and you get hurt, I'll be here to patch you right up. You'll be fine. You got that Neosporin. Oh, yeah. You're so weird. And Allison <laughs> proceeds to throw the pillow over the crib. That's a 14. So Allison bends down on her little baby dragonborn haunches grabs the the pillow and gives it a nice toss it goes up in the air does a little twirl and then softly lands on the ground outside the crib yes and allison would totally like to do that but with her body 
All right. <laughs> Give me a roll. Okay. What do you, uh, do you have athletics or anything like that? Uh, yeah, she's got athletics. She's a, she's not like the boss baby, but she's like a, a boss baby. Okay, you know so, I mean? so give me an athletics check then. Ooh, 19. Allison again kind of squats down to her haunches, uh, spreads her arms out almost like wings, and it looks like she's stretching a little bit. You hear a little, a little baby crack uh, as she kind of limbers up. And then from there, she launches up uh, with with her powerful baby thighs, grabs onto the railing of the crib, uh, and using that momentum, she uses her arms to continue to launch her. She reaches the top, and then her feet kind of go up in the air like a perfect handstand. She holds it for a second at the edge of the crib, and then... (laughs) slowly lets it fall as she does uh, she finishes her flip and lands down almost like in a spider-man pose on top of the pillow yeah fuck on that nerds come on so slow let's go let's go yeah a bead of sweat slowly forms on alan's head as it <laughs> just starts dripping down he's like oh boy yeah uh, do we all have to do that uh spider-man stuff <laughs> you don't think that's possible uh the old games just ain't what they used to be, you know. <laughs> Alan, move your ass. I barely learned how to walk the other day. I want to tie my blankies together and try to repel from my crib. <laughs> give me uh, give me a roll for that. For First for tying the blankies together. All right. Well, I rolled a 19 without adding anything, so I think we're okay. Hey, you don't know. <laughs> Add that intelligence, baby. Al intelligence? Okay. That's That should be plus one. Yeah, plus one. Okay, uh, so with that dirty twenty, you uh, you you take the blankie. So you have the one that's in the crib, and then you have your your secret little blankie also. And you tie them together, and you kind of sling it over the side of the the crib, and you manage to. Uh, it's not like super tight and secure, but it's kind of loose enough uh, that you can probably attempt a rappel without it just completely coming undone but also like you know enough slack for you to slide around uh i'm gonna bring a pillow and hold it with my legs as i rappel down okay uh give me an if you have athletics give me that that's 21 arthur grabs the the pillow in between his thighs and kind of shimmies up the rope and then uh hesitantly almost like a like when a little kid is trying to climb out of a pool like over the side just flops over the side uh and then the loose kind of wrap around of the blankie uh propels him down pretty quick but safely and uh and he lands down and then uh you cushion your fall with the pillow that you had in between your knees there we go Come on, Alan. What what kind of latch situation are we looking at? For like when when whenever you pull up a crib, it usually like latches, mm-hmm. so it stays open. What is what is that looking like for this thing? Uh, it's kind of like a spring loaded mechanism of some sort. It's definitely meant mm-hmm. to be child proof. Uh, from the mm-hmm. outside, if you were adult height, it'd be pretty easy to uh, to open. From the inside, mm-hmm. though, there are some like uh, kind of springs and stuff like that that you could see that if you had some sort of mechanism to mess with, you could maybe pop it open. It's also not super secure. Like, you know, if you really push on it, it budges. Okay. How many pillows do I got? Uh, you got one. Well, Alan's just going to just gonna look way up at the top, uh, holding just like the sheets, trying. He's, he's like been trying to tie the whole time. He's not good <laughs> at it. It's not been working. Uh, so he's just going to kind of look around and then he's just going to pat Timifer on the head. Be like, all right, old boy. Yeah, well, I think uh, the only way to get out of here is just going to tumble out. So he's going to just take his little pillow, he's going to hold it in front of him, and he's going to run straight at the uh, bars and see what happens. Give me a strength check. Oh, my God. Uh, that is a 16 plus zero. So Alan prepares his little pillow shield uh, and backs up against one end of the crib. And runs full speed at it and uh, and smashes into the uh, the wooden side of it. Uh, and you feel the crib tip all the way forward. It, it starts to go, it starts to go, it starts to come backwards. Uh, and as it starts to right itself again, you finish throwing your weight against it one more time. Uh, and with that, you kind of land flat on your stomach as the crib comes crashing down onto the ground. Uh, and you almost slide out with the pillow on your belly, uh, and Timifer is <laughs> smothered in between you and the pillow. He immediately jumps up, and he's like, hey, hey, boy, 
Hey, Tim, Tim, how, how are you doing? And he taps me. He's like, oh, he's okay. He's a little, a, little, a little shaken up. Do me a favor. Roll a dexterity check for me. Whew. That was worse. Oh, no. Uh, that is a, a five. That's all. Uh, Great. Alan, that was the most badass thing I've ever seen you do. Oh, that's a bad woo. You said a bad word. Artie. Hey. Mm. Artie, shut up. Ooh, Mama Mia, Chocolate. Artie, stop! I'm going to tell on you. Stop! Artie! One of the babies starts going... <laughs> oh man, you woke up, Georgie. Georgie, Georgie. Now he'll never go back to sleep. But, uh, what you got there in that fanny pack of yours? He opens it up. He unzips it. Uh, inside, I have one singular Band-Aid. <laughs> I have a small juice box that just sits in there. I want to try and take his juice box. Hey, forcibly? Uh, I can ask him first, I suppose. Give me the juice box. It's only for emergencies. If something happens to this whole ordeal, then maybe we'll use it. I'm going to take it from him. Oh, boy. Are you trying to be quick or are you trying to brute force him? Quickness. All right, roll a dexterity contest, both of you. Idiots. Guys. I got 16. I got a 14. Arthur, you take the juice box. I go over to the crying baby and I say, something for your troubles, kid. Now keep it quiet. And I yeah. toss him the I toss him the orange juice. Uh, you toss the orange juice into the uh, the crib and it kind of smacks him on the face and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he kind of grabs the, the juice box, but he's literally an infant, so he doesn't know what to do. And he just kind of cradles it and and like cries very softly, but then kind of goes back to sleep. <laughs> okay. Is this all? Is this all of us? Yeah. And you couldn't get any of these other babies to come join us. Does it look like they're here with us, Artie? No. So, no. Uh, everyone except Allison. Through the locked door, you hear the voice of Melandra going, I hear some kind of racket going on in that baby room. Grandall, Grandall, are you on a coffee break again? Those children are up to no good. I can feel it. And and you just and you hear some sort of footsteps, but you can't see beyond the closed door. All right, listen up. If one of them comes in here, leave it to me. Okay, I got that. That's my area. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I thought you would be, Alan. Leave it to Alan. The freaking yeah. I guess I want to search the room for any tools or something. Okay, give me a search. All right, six. <laughs> <laughs> you look around the room and you see nothing of use. The only thing that comes to mind is the knowledge you already have that usually once uh, once you guys are done playing with stuff and all of that, it usually gets locked up in, uh, there's a little storage room basically right outside of here. All right. I mean, do you guys want to maybe like load up? We're going to have to exit to get the stuff, but we're going to have to exit regardless. So. All right. Sounds like... Uh... What's her name? Melandra? Mm-hmm. She's running around looking for us. Or she's about to be. So we should move. Oh, we, sh- we should have left the dummies in the crib so that when they come in, it looks like it's us inside sleeping away. Damn it. Are well, mine's kind of tipped over. Uh, uh, I think all together of us, we can lift it back up. Should we even bother doing that? Should we just go? All right, let's just go for it. Again, from, from far off, uh, both Alan... And Arthur, you guys here? Melandra, can I have like five minutes? I'm just waiting for my coffee to brew. Please, if you don't get in there to look after those babies, I will. All of them are suspicious. Sounds like they're causing a real commotion in there. You got two minutes. Can I please just have my coffee? I just put them to sleep. Two minutes. Gotta make a break for it now, ladies. Let's go. All right, I'm ready to go when you are. Let's move, Artie. Uh, so we're going to attempt to go from our playpen area, whatever, to storage room. Stealthily. First, you need to exit this room because the door is closed. Alan, mm-hmm. if anything happens, if they see us, we're going to split up. Sis and I, I'm counting on you, sport. Oh, boy. You distract them. All right, I'll do my best. Okay. Alan, if something goes wrong, just yell. Sis, get up on my shoulders and uh, unlock the door. And, uh, All right. Okay. Put my hand out for her to step on and onto my shoulder. Allison, give me a a, a roll with advantage, dexterity. Mm, eh, 
Uh, 12. That's with advantage? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the door swings open. <laughs> and as you push it open, uh, since you're braced up and you're against the wall, and you kind of reach up and you grab the doorknob and you swing it open, the door, you're putting too much of your weight on it. So as it swings open, you kind of fall forward, uh, and the door swings and actually slams against, uh, against the wall uh, that is on your right, which is right next to the break room. Where you heard the voices coming from earlier. Time to haul ass. Let's go. I think storage might be locked. So, Alan, give me a boost up into the storage room so I can unlock it. You all right? Yeah, hop on. What is going on in there? You hear that? You hear those little, those little demons? Uh, and you hear footsteps begin to approach. Uh, you're, you are attempting to unlock the storage room door? Yeah. Uh, give me a roll with advantage since Alan is assisting you. 18 plus 8 is 26 if I use my thieves tools to unlock it. Yeah. God bless. Arthur, you unpin the little safety pin that is holding up your diaper. With your left hand, you hold your diaper up to your body. It's a cloth diaper. Uh, and Alan is braced up against the door to the storage room with his back against the wall, holding his hands out. You step into it, again, holding your diaper in one hand and your, your little pin in the other. And you boost up, you insert it into the lock, and in like half a second, you're... It clicks open, swings open, it glides gracefully, uh, and the storage room door is now open. I'd like to stay up, like, so I can shimmy around the door, have one of the kids close it so I can lock the door. Cool. So, uh, you step up and you put your thieves tools in, you open the door, it glides open, uh, and with one hand you, you exert incredible strength, uh, as it swings open very silently, uh, both, well, Alan and Allison, are you going along with this? Yeah. Alan's a follower. All right. Uh, so Arthur gives you both a, a signal. He kind of like tilts his head into the room. Both of you shuffle into the room. And then Arthur, you switch to your other hand on the on the doorknob on the other side. And you kind of shift your weight so that the door starts to slide shut. You pull out the pin uh, and the door clicks shut very quietly. You press the lock button and drop down now inside of the storage room. Okay. Well... No turning back now, kids. What you see inside of storage is everything you could possibly dream of. Uh, there are bins in here with all the good, good stuff. You have plastic bats all over the place. You have collapsible bright sabers with sound effects and everything. You have yo-yos. You have buildos building blocks. Uh, you have wooden alphabet blocks. You have a big blue rubber ball. You have a play-doh. You have a Murph crossbow. It, it's everything. Everyone give me a perception check. 19. Mine too. 19. 10. Okay, uh, so both of, both of the boys, you look at the, uh, the far wall, and it is a, a beautifully organized, they're almost like mini cubby holes for all of the alphabet blocks. Uh, and you see lots of different letters, they're not necessarily in perfect order, but they're all like neatly put away. Uh, except for, there are four empty holes, uh, about, at about your eye height. So you could slot four blocks into there. Uh, and you find certain a certain amount of alphabet blocks scattered around the room. You find an N, an N, an R, an E, an A, a P, an O, and an L. How many slots are there again? Four. And that is pretty much all you see in this storage room right now. What do you all do? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and take a, a guess and say that we spell open. He's going to pick up like the O and slide it into the... The first, if you're reading it from left to right. Okay, you put in the O and nothing happens. Anybody think I'm on the right track here? Should I just keep going? Go for a sport. He's just going to keep going. P, E, and N. You put in the N and you hear a click. And then the wall of alphabet blocks kind of recedes in and lifts up. Uh, and it opens up into a, a relatively small cubby hole. It's about, imagine like a, like a small like home safe size hole. And there are... These two vibrant, pearlescent blue jars. Hey, I'm a regular Idaho Jones now. <laughs> <laughs> Alan's definitely going to take one of those jars. You're just going to take the jar, like, with you? He's going to pick it up. Which one? Are they different? How are they different? There's one on the left and one on the right. They look very, very similar. He's going to take the one on the right. Okay. Allison wants to get a bat. All right, you now have a purple uh, plastic bat. It's one of those, like, really hollow ones that you use, you know? That's 
exactly what she wants. Okay. Can I carry two weapons or no? I mean, you can carry <laughs> two, sure. <laughs> I like to grab the crossbow and a plastic lightsaber and go with the lightsaber. Uh, wait, with the lightsaber you're going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, so here's what happens. Arthur grabs uh, one of the plastic uh, Murph hand crossbows, uh, and it has five uh, little orange foam darts, uh, and you sling it over your back. And then you grab one of the bright sabers, uh, and with the blade still collapsed inside of it, you just hold it and go with your mouth. <laughs> Does anyone remember those like long plastic tubes that has like a little thing where if you tip it, it makes like a boing sound and does that. Yeah, he's going to grab one of those and hold it like a staff. Uh, and then if no one if no one else is taking uh, the other blue jar, he's going to take the other one too. You grab one of your makeshift baby staffs uh, and then you grab the other pearlescent blue jar. And now you're holding two jars underneath your arms. Give one to sis. Wait, why? Don't... I don't want one. All right, I guess he's going to carry it all himself. It's my burden to bear. I'm going to get some animal crackers and graham crackers. <gasps> Can you get me some... Can... You get me? There are no snacks to be seen. Damn. Oh. Just taking... All right, I saved some in my diaper here. Can each have a cracker. <laughs> we could have had some juice. <laughs> but, you know, that's not happening. It ain't his fault that he's out here getting loose. You gotta blame it on the... Well, juice. we've got those jars to party with now. There's gotta be some applesauce in there. Alan, are you looking inside any of the jars? They're just a little heavy. So, what do you... Like, Obviously, it's it's like see through. So what do no, I no, see? No, no, it's not see through. It? Oh, it's not see through. No. I thought it was like a see through. Okay, no, he's gonna open it up. He's gonna open one up. Then. The one that was on the left or the one that was on the right? <laughs> one on the left. Both of them. The one on the left. Excellent. So you open that one, and inside you are entranced. Uh, roll a will saving throw for me. Wisdom saving throw. Sorry, I'm thinking three point five. Oh, baby, that's going to be a 22. You are not entranced. Uh, <laughs> you look inside and you see these little squishy packets of blue and orange liquid. And you just look at it and you take a whiff and the like oh. this strong chemical scent just kind of hits you really hard. And you go, Ugh, and you put the lid back on the door. Yeah. I don't want that one. Wait, I want that if I ever get captured by the enemy. <laughs> Are you, are you grabbing the jar now? <laughs> no, because I'm going to get entranced. Oh, I can risk it. Okay. Shit, I don't know what's in there, though. What's in there, Alan? Ah, it stinks. Stinky. <laughs> I think I can arm my crossbow with some stinky, stinky, uh, stink, whatever is in there. You know, make a smoke, a stink bomb. It's all for you, partner. Go ahead. Okay. All right, roll a wisdom saving throw. Damn. <laughs> oh, no. So 16 plus 3, that's 19. So you go in and you open this jar uh, and the little packets call to you. They're, they're bright colors. And you grab one and you just kind of squish it in your hand and then coat uh, your darts in it. And then you, you shake your hand off and, and the liquid goes flying off. There. Now Miss Melandra won't know what hit her. All right. Now Alan's going to open the right jar. You open the right jar and roll another wisdom saving throw for me. All right, that one's a 19. Inside, you see Grendel's famous Choco Chunk cookies. Uh, and the aroma enters your nasal passages and and intoxicates you. Uh, and then you go, eh, you know what? I'm not even that hungry right now, so you're fine. I already I had a big lunch. What's in there? Cookies. <gasps> Bad ones, though. Both of you roll wisdom saving throws now. Uh... Allison's wisdom is low, my dude. <laughs> uh, 20 not natural. <laughs> One natural. <laughs> Allison, you have never wanted anything more in your three years of life than that Choco Chunk cookie right now. Alan, cookie me. I promise you don't want it. Cookie me, Alan. Oh, boy. And I put my hand out and I grab his little polo shirt by the collar and I pull him I'm like if you don't give me a cookie right now I swear to god Alan I swear yeah, she's gone post to hit the deck I'm gonna try and tackle <laughs> Allison <laughs> so that she doesn't no! she doesn't get the cookie <laughs> roll a strength check and then Allison roll a dexterity saving throw damn, damn I got a 12 
Nineteen. <laughs> Arthur leaps for his sister, and with your with your dragonborn reflexes, you like most of your body stays perfectly still, and your torso just like ducks and weaves uh, around Arthur's body as he goes sailing into some of the plastic cubbies uh, and crashes into them and falls onto the ground. And then uh, from outside of the room, you hear Grandal. Look at what they did in here! Oh, you are so fired! Oh my God! The, the, oh, the, the three little ones, the the the, the A kids, the, they're gone. Oh, they probably ran to the park. And uh, and you hear little gnome footsteps uh, running to the front of the building. And then you just hear Grendel going, oh my, oh god, oh god, no, I can't afford this right now, I can't afford this right now, I have my, but the bills are coming in, oh my god. Coming from the nap room. Allison would like to eat the cookie, if she has it already. Allison, you gobble that cookie up. No, no. <laughs> no. You gobble that cookie up, and and you feel revitalized inside, and you go, ooh, oh, oh, mm, mm, with the delicious goodness of chocolate. Oh, she always wants to nap after a good meal. We're going to lose her. Shut up, Artie. You don't... <laughs> I want to slap her Is like... Is Like, snap out of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alan is going to uh, pull out, out of his little fanny pack, uh, his little flashlight that he has... Okay. And he will go ahead and just cast his uh, cantrip <laughs> by turning on the uh, flashlight. And it will just be uh, just just a bright light. Just shining right in her eyes. Dog, Joan, you better not go asleep. You stay uh, awake. It's daytime. It's not nighttime. No time to sleep. <laughs> Wake up. Shh. You're making too much noise, sis. I don't know why, but I feel like Play-Doh and a yo-yo will come in handy. I'd like to take those if I can. You can. I'm taking them. Wait, are we taking those jaws with us? Yeah, no. You don't want those. They're bad. I, I think I do, my friend. I think I do. You feel free to use them. Are they over-encumbering or they can kind of be like... They're kind of big for your baby size. Yeah. I'm going to take one of those with me. I would like to take the cookie jar. Fine, I'll take the other one. Yeah. Allison... Give me another wisdom saving throw. Oh, you know her wisdom is not. <laughs> 16. That's pretty good for Allison. All right, Allison, when, as you grab the jar and you put it under your arm, you lift the lid to look at the two remaining cookies and you go, nah. and then you close the lid and you steal yourself and are ready to journey on. Wow, Allison has more willpower than Amanda does. Okay. That's Real crazy. quick. Um, Alan's just gonna waddle on over to, uh, Allison and just put one little hand on her shoulder and be like, hey, uh, just wanted to tell you, you're doing a really good job. Uh, I, I, I think you're really helping the team out. Really appreciate everything you're bringing to the table. I just wanted to say from, you know, one baby to another, way to go champ. You're really racking it today. And he's gonna just out of his little fanny pack, put a little sticker that says, like, number one star just, like, on there. And what I'm doing is I'm casting Guidance. So what this does, it's a cantrip, and I touch one willing creature, and once uh, it lasts for about a minute, and you get to add one D4 to any ability check. In case you need it. A little bit of help there. Great. Incredible. Allison is just gonna step closer to Alice so she's like right up in his face and she's gonna look at him right in the eye and she's just gonna say Alan thank you so much <laughs> all right well thank if we're done with the participation trophies and whatnot okay. I'd like to get on with the mission at hand here Alan I need your assistance once again to open the door all right, what do you need? Just need to step on you real quick to open the door. That's what I do best. Here you go. <laughs> Give me another roll with advantage. 26. 26, beautiful. So uh, with absolute ease, uh, you hop onto uh, from Alan's hand onto the door again. Uh, it kind of sags down. You brace your feet against it, and uh, it swings open very gently, uh, opening the way for your companions. All right, A-team, let's move now. Go, run. Front door. You're right. I'm running. 
Okay, so uh, so you hear the footsteps of a uh, of little baby bare feet running on the ground, the, the little pitter patter uh, of these three babies beelining it for the main entrance of the tarnished Tots daycare facility. Uh, and you're about to hit the front door. Uh, you see the the big glass double doors. You see freedom. You see the outside. You know the grounds of play are not far away. And as you go to open that door from behind you, you hear. You're not supposed to be here. And you turn to see Luca. Luca is Grendel's son. And he says, Are you the one that made my mom cry? Are you trying to escape to the little grounds of play? And I see, I look around, I see all these babies running around, causing a rumpus, and I'll raise the jaw above my head, and I say, Start the riot! And I throw the jaw right at fucking Luca. <laughs> <gasps> uh, make a ranged attack. L, yes, 17. Roll a d4. Two. You lift the jar over your head and you shout, Stop the riot! And you and you throw it, uh, and this glass jar full of uh, these little pods goes flying right into uh, Luca's left shoulder torso area and shatters across it. Uh, and you see some of the uh, uh, some of the pods pop, uh, and sort of you see the the blue and orange liquid drip down him. You see uh, some blood coming out of where his shoulder is, where some of the the ceramic shattered. And he takes a knee, and you see his eyes start to water. And he goes, <laughs> and he goes, all right. You wanna have a little rumpus? Let's have a little rumpus. And he pulls out his bright saber and extends it, and you see this uh, this awesome, high-quality purple bright saber uh, extend, and he goes, mm-hmm. I think I'll do the same. And so <laughs> Arthur returns the gesture and extends uh, a red bright saber, and now you hear both of them vibrating. Going, All babies are free. All right. Tell you what. You beat me in this little rumpus? I'll let you go to the park. If I beat you in this little rumpus, then I take Timothy. And he points to the Timifer, the little frog that Alan is carrying. It's Timifer, <laughs> not Timothy. Whatever, I'm gonna rename him to Jackson anyway. Jackson? That's right. Now then we can't let him name him Jackson. I'd rather die than let him name him Jackson. <laughs> Then die you will. Roll for initiative. <laughs> 17. 4. 13. First up is Allison. You bet your ass. Allison's gonna look at Luca and she's gonna th- <laughs> and she's gonna say, There's only room for one baby with a lisp in this daycare. And she's gonna whip out her purple bat and she's gonna twirl it and she's gonna swing, baby! Woo, that's a 19. Okay, that hits. Give me a uh, roll for damage. Six, baby. Oh, wait, wait. We're not going to like... Baby on baby violence. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, I guess we are. <laughs> All right. So you run up to Luca after you say, there's only enough room for one baby with a lisp in this daycare. With your purple bat, you swing up and, uh, and it hits the side of his head. And the purple bat dents where it makes contact. And it brings him down to the ground And as he takes uh, six points of damage. And now he is bleeding, he's crying, and his eyes are red. And he goes... <laughs> <laughs> and next up is Arthur. While she's fighting him or while he's down on the ground, I want to take my yo-yo and garrote the sucker <laughs> with the string. <laughs> At least hold him down, if not choke him to death. All right, I was envisioning the yo-yo as a ranged weapon, but go ahead and give me a melee attack with disadvantage. Damn. It's like Hitman with babies. Exactly. This is yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> 14. 14, that hits. Uh, roll a d4 for damage. It's a 3. You take this yo-yo and you kind of loose it out. You let it drag on the ground. You walk the dog with the yo-yo. Uh, and then you sling it around uh, Luca's neck while he's on the ground. And then you grab the yo-yo as it returns to you. And you pick him up. And that kind of stands him back up on his feet as he goes... Ah! <laughs> And he activates his baby barbarian rage. (laughs) 
and he is going to make a reckless attack on you, Arthur. Uh, so he gets advantage on that. What is your AC, Arthur? 14. That absolutely hits. Woo! Okay, so you have really hurt uh, Luca. Uh, Luca's not looking great. Uh, he lets out this primal scream, and then he goes, You made my mom cry! And he pulls out uh, his bright saber and kind of spins. So grabs uh, grabs a yo-yo string, throws it down, snapping it in half, and then turns to face you, and he's in close proximity with you, with his arm kind of down at his hip where his bright saber was, and he slashes up as hard as he can with the bright saber, hitting you across the chest and then up the chin, uh, and that does 14 points of damage. Oh God damn it. <laughs> All right, I'm dead. He does that, and Arthur, you uh, you take the hit across the chin, and you fall down to the ground, and you smack your head on the ground, uh, and you are now unconscious. And he goes, "All right, who's next, huh?" And he twirls his little bright saber in his hand clumsily, uh, and that brings us to Alan. Alan uh, not only had his son threatened to be taken away from him, uh, he just saw his friend get knocked down. So he's just gonna have that, like he's looking down, and you, you, you uh, do not see his eyes, and he's just like, you know, I was gonna take it a little easy on you, but then you done goofed, boy. And he pulls out from his fanny pack. He's like, you know what this is? And he's holding up his little flashlight. You know, boy. No. This right here. It's a high-density flashlight, and he clicks on a switch. He goes, my dad doesn't know I took this from his toolbox. And he's going to aim it right at his face. And he's going to click it. I'm going to have to do this roll real quick. Woo, baby, that's great. Okay, that's going to be a 19. I assume that hits. Yeah, and he's going to cast Guiding Bolt, which this this flashlight is going to shine. Shine right in this boy's face. And he's going to have to take uh, 4d6 radiant damage. <laughs> Roll that for me. That's 17. Holy crud. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's going to say, do you see the light now, boy? And he goes, ah, 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 and he shields his eyes and he's, he's squinting. Uh, and he starts running wildly and smacks face first into a wall. And then stands there for a second like a cartoon-looking loopy, and then falls flat down on the ground, seemingly completely perfectly unconscious. Allison would like to run to Artie, and she's going to, like, grab him by the shoulders, and she's just going to shake him like, Artie! Artie, wake up! Artie, please wake up! Artie, please wake up! Cookie. Ah, She's going to start crying. Give me a cookie. What? Cookie. And she's gonna, I don't know where the jar is, magically pull it out of her diaper and uh, get a cookie and she's gonna shove it in his mouth. <laughs> Roll a like, wisdom saving throw for me. <laughs> With advantage. <laughs> Remember, you get to add uh, a d4 to it as well. <laughs> We're good. We totally did it. We totally did it. <laughs> it's 19 plus wisdom is 20, and then, you know, plus d4 is gonna be. Okay. All right. So, uh, so you pull out the jar of cookies, and the the overwhelming aroma kind of wafts up to you again, especially as you hold it right in front of your face, and you look at the delicious chocolate chunks, uh, and you want nothing more than to take a bite of it. But the panic of uh, you've never seen your big brother taken down that quickly, uh, or really at all in that fashion. It was intense, uh, and you kind of shove a cookie into his unconscious mouth, uh, and it kind of starts to crumble and break against his mouth, like the Cookie Monster eating a cookie. Even even though he's not really eating it, and the crumbs are flying everywhere, and you grab his jaw and you kind of force him to like swallow it a little bit, and you see uh, some of the the chocolate start to melt. His mouth gets messy around it, and he goes mm. as he uh, as he kind of uh, stabilizes. And now you have one cookie left. Uh, and with that, Alan's gonna waddle over. He's gonna pull the little band aid out of his little pouch, and he's just gonna. Smack it on where he 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 got hit in the chin, right? Yeah, it was right across from under the peck up to the chin. Yeah, so he probably has like a little scrape there, and he's just gonna put that little band aid right on it. And what did we say the band aid does again? D two. 
D2. Okay. So roll a D4 and half it. That's two. Okay. So uh, Alan pulls out the little Band-Aid, uh, and it's one of those with, like, the, the ointment pre-applied on it. This is, you know, this is high-grade stuff. Uh, and kind of carefully pulls back uh, the, the little flaps, the protective flaps, places it on a tiny scrape that Arthur has on his chin, uh, and applies it. Kisses his fingers and then puts it to the bandage and rubs it and uh, and kind of very softly sings a little like healing song. And Arthur, you you feel yourself start to wake up as you feel a little better and you're feeling really winded. Uh, but you open your eyes and you see your sister and your best friend standing over you. I had a boo boo. <laughs> Playtime's over. Let's get out of here. Okay, Hardy. Come you got it, champ. I want to, like, help Artie up and, like, put his arm around Same. Over my sh- yeah, we're gonna... He'll be in the middle, and we're gonna... <laughs> you do that. You both You both support the eldest of the group uh, <laughs> and help him rise to his feet again. He comes up, uh, and he dusts off his little baby tie uh, and straightens his jacket and walks out with both of you supporting him. So you guys walk up to the uh, the front door of the of Tarnished Tots, uh, and in the background you you see Grendel, and she she runs out and she goes, Luca, oh my God, Luca, 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 no! Uh, and she kind of picks him up and, and starts uh, nursing him, and you hear a Luca kind of groaning, going, Oh, mommy. <laughs> um, and then both of you, so Alan and Allison, you both grab one of each of the two glass double doors and push it open as Arthur strides out in his uh, baby suit. Uh, and in front of you is Melandra. And Melandra goes, what are you kids up to? And then she sees Grendel with Luca. She goes, oh my god, Luca! And she runs past you back into there. Those little demon children! Uh, and she runs set to help with Luca as all three of you proceed out into the outside, seemingly unobstructed. As you walk out, you feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. A cool autumn breeze tussles your hair, and just a few meters away, you see it. The grounds of play. Gray foe castle towers, the mechanical dragon, teeter-totters of terror. Adrenaline rushes through your body. Then, you hear it. Hooves. A chill runs down your spine as your little baby legs carry you toward the playground with haste. You know that sound. Daddy is coming. This episode of Dungeons and Trimbus was brought to you by our patrons, Clara Jean Kelly, Jerry Benetados, Queso Loco, Terrence Knox, and November Sky. To find out how you can support the show, visit the links in the description or whimsicproductions.com. 